Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cube here in the New York City location at the NYSE. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Dave Vellante was just with me last week. We were at the IBM Analyst Kickoff Forum. That's where they kicked off all their strategy innovations. Today, we're here at the New York Stock Exchange. Again, this is the Cube coverage from NYSC. We're here with Alex, who's the CEO, co-CEO, co-founder of Salonis, a really hot company doing amazing things. Alex, great to have you on the Cube. Appreciate John, you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're here at the New York Stock Exchange. You guys had a great event. The Cube was there, live streaming for two days. Um, first of all, you guys are doing extremely well. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, had a great event. Um, before we get into the, some of the things you guys talked about the event, because you had great customers there, what's the secret to success uh, for Salonis right now? You guys are doing extremely well. It's like you skated through where the puck is, as they say. You <laughs> caught the wave. You're on it, you're paddling great, got great customers. You're really in the wheelhouse of what everyone's talking about, which is the business value, unlocking the data, and also bringing in end-to-end -end automations, a big part of this kind of phase one of the Gen AI wave. What's the secret, secret formula? What's, what's the secret of success? John, I, I think obviously there's lots that it goes into it, but ultimately we are the value company, right? And we enable our customers to get full visibility into their processes and then drive tons of improvement. And we're not doing it alone, we're doing it with an ecosystem, obviously, of many players out there. But we enable uh, that very fast for customers. And uh, that's exciting about it. You know, we always say that processes are your greatest level for value and your fastest level for change. <laughs> and that's why this space is so important and that's why it's growing. And what's interesting too, is you start to see AI kind of get visibility into the enterprise, which where there's a lot of value, it's still a small percentage relative to all the AI action. Most of it's on the consumer side yes. when people talk about the foundation models, computer vision or language, it's all kind of consumer, but those are the big large language models. And it's now well known that you don't need to have the large language model only and that there's a power law developing in, in the models where you got specialty models as well as proprietary data in there. So you got the private AI conversation. So you got all this going on and then now you got the hype of agentic systems, right. which is basically taking multi-step processes right. and making that work, not just as an automation layer, but as like true trusted delegation. Like 100%. you, yep. this has to oh. get done. And by the way, mm -hmm. it's throwing off more data too. Yep. 100%. Talk about the reaction to that. So, you know, a lot of our customers ask, how do we get from AI to enterprise AI, right? How do we get from, you know, it can do my, children's homework, it can you know, pass the bag exam, it can do all this amazing stuff, but how do we use it to automate our auto management? How do we use it to provide better customer service? So we introduced agency, um, agency, right? And agency is a suite of partnerships, of integrations, and of enabling tools to really enable agentic automation. Because the difference between doing the homework or passing the bag exam and automating processes yeah, and being able yeah. to be that delegate is really understanding how each business flows. Yeah. Understanding the unique processes of a company, getting access to the unique process data across yeah. systems. And that's what Salonis provides. So yeah. we're very excited about using AI and we're embedding it yeah. all across our stack. But we are even more excited about agency because that enables AI agents and that ultimately enables what we call enterprise AI for our customers. I, I, and it's driving a lot of value already. First of all, I love the name because you know the old expression, have high agency, exactly. which means you <laughs> can handle yourself, um, but also agents, exactly. right? So a little bit of a play on words there. Um, and this is where it's all going. And agents are coming down the road. We see it clearly, but it's not yet there. We're starting to see yep. the setup there. Um, let's zoom out for a bit. Let's talk about the company. Um, yep. Just give us a quick, set the table. What are you guys doing right now for business? Give us the inside the numbers and the, the, the basic overview of yeah. Salonis. And then we can talk about what the keynote was about. What was the overall theme of the yes. event? Yes, so uh, we started Salonis in 2011. We started right out of college because we fell in love with process mining, okay? And process mining is really this X-ray for your business processes. Any business process, no matter in which system, no matter across how many systems, you can get x-ray vision into get visibility and improve it. And we fell in love with that idea. It wasn't a research idea at that point, but it had no adoption within businesses. So we decided Salonis that we want to bring this, you know, from the academia to the boardroom and build a company. And you know, it's been amazing, yeah. an amazing ride. You know, we are almost three thousand people around the world. We have amazing customers. You, yeah. you know, you met some of them at, at the event here. Yeah. 
and uh, you know we work with about half of the Fortune 200 and many many smaller customers around the world. And um, you know we we help them drive value, drive more value yeah. out of their out of their business processes. So it's an exciting journey. We've um, come a long way, but there's a lot ahead. Yeah, if you're watching, the Cube has uh, the Cube.net has all the videos. Check them out. Uh, a lot of great highlights. You know, mentioned between 2011 and now. Okay, if you look at that time period, we had, a lot of things have happened. Yes. So big data was yes. Hadoop was the big deal. Yes. Okay, That's and then right. Spark came on. Now you got the data lakes. Um, but also RPA was hot, right. okay? And then then we got into the, the generative category. Right. Jensen Wong from NVIDIA, their stock at an all-time high yeah. yesterday. I don't know what's, what's trading trading at these days, but you're seeing that it's a, it's it's generative. So right. it's a new category, yes. it's generating. It's not yes. a pre-programmed right. thing. Talk about the difference as you guys came into that, that changeover. Right. Because there's differences between RPA and now what generative AI right. offers. Could you share your thoughts on that? So first of all, we love all the, the emerging cloud data infrastructure. We use a lot of that. We partner with those companies because the faster we can get to the data, the more scalable it is, the more of our magic we can do, right? So, so that's great. Um, on the automation side, I think what you're talking about is this automation layer. And RPA, I still remember this, had a huge promise, a bot for every person. You know, we're going to automate, you know, 30% of our processes, things like that, and it didn't really happen. Yeah. And the, where it fell short, it was too brittle and yeah. too much like scripted, right? You had, it's almost like a macro, you have to tell exactly what yeah. to do if something changes, yeah. you have to do it over. With agents now, they can actually reason, right? Yeah. And they can actually adapt. But what they need is they need the critical inputs. Yeah. And that is a mix of data and context, yeah. right? John, I mean, over the last 50 years, in our enterprises, we've created quite a mess. <laughs> we have ERP systems, yeah. we have CRM, we have yeah. HR, we have cloud systems, we have this web of systems. Yeah. It's very, very messy. So we need a semantic layer, which is really a fancy way of yeah. saying all these systems and departments speak a different language. They all speak their own unique language. Yeah. We need a common language yeah. to enable language models, to enable AI. And that's what Salonis provides. You know, last yeah. year, we introduced our process intelligence graph which is a graph-based process intelligence foundation that can go across all of yeah. your processes, look at the correlations, look at how auto management yeah. touches inventory and accounting, and, and then we've added context with process models, business rules, and, we, you know, and that really enables agents in a new yeah. way when you add in our agency. So we are extremely excited to enable enterprise AI across domains, yeah. applications, and processes. I mean, the process mining background, when you think about AI, allows you to go do the heavy lifting on the setup. So you go mine, the, go mine all the process. Oh, they speak this language, that language. And again, yeah. harmonization has been a big topic, semantic layer, control plane, uh, whatever you want to call it, shared data layer. There's a lot of different names for it. But what's interesting is that it's like musicians. You play the guitar, you play the drums, exactly. and at the end of the day, you just want to play good music, right? Exactly. And so this is the problem with the enterprise. You got these fragmented individual systems that aren't working together. Right. So now, okay, we love abstraction layers. That's where innovation happens. Yeah. So take me through the mindset of, okay, you got all this stuff, you understand process, it's almost like the old days, you do some discovery. Yeah. How, do you, how did you guys get to that point? And what are customers doing right now when they say, I know my estate's fragmented, I know it's a disaster, uh, for a reason, it was built that way, whether you call it sprawl or intentional. Right. Uh, I just want to make it work. So now the opportunity, because I have data. If you have data right now, that's who's winning right now in Gen AI. Right. Whoever has data right. can right. instantly be agile right. and reset. Right. Take us through that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And you know, we really started with traditional process mining. Okay, so you take an order, you track it through the systems, you take an invoice, and uh, that's always a case by case thing, right? Because you have orders, you have invoices, you have customers, and you have to create all these different models. What we then notice is, well, all these processes are interdependent, right? How you process your orders is going to inform how your invoices and your billing yeah, works. Yeah. That even goes all the way back to your master data, to your leads. So we've, um, almost five years ago, embarked on a journey to build the process intelligence graph, to bring all this in one data model yeah. so we can look at each process, but we can also look at the combination. That in itself is a huge innovation. Yeah. It drives innovation in supply chain, yeah. in financial back office processes, in KYC, in getting a single view of your customer's processes. Mm. So that's um, that's been a big step for us. It was introduced last year. We've never seen a new product being yeah. adopted so fast, yeah. okay? <laughs> so that's one thing. Then we've added the context, 
right? You need to know what is a good process, what is a bad process. How do we define on-time delivery? You know, if you go on yeah. ChatGPT, you can get 50 definitions for on-time delivery, but how does your company define yeah. it? Yeah. How do you want to pay? Is working capital or PNL more important when you pay invoices? All this stuff we can add with our modeling layer, yeah. our process models and, and business rules and, and responsibilities. You put that together. Yeah. And then you expose that to AI magic happens. Yeah. Because suddenly Asians can come in, like in our customer Constantino, which has been able to, to, to get 5x yeah. productivity in their auto management process. Yeah. It's enabled by Salonis plus agents. And you can build that agent in Microsoft, you can build it you know, yeah. wherever you like. Um, and, and we can talk about the partnerships that we have there. But really, yeah. You know, this process intelligence graph is really yeah. the key. You know, it's interesting. You're hitting on something that I've been saying since 2015, since we started covering AWS deeply. Well, 2013 is when we started covering Amazon. But when people started to wake up to what they were really doing, it wasn't just for startups. It was just an easy way to get provision hardware. When they started winning the enterprise, I think the big goodness aha moment was, this is horizontally scalable. And so... Data doesn't scale horizontally naturally. No. It's usually vertically specialized right. around domain specific right. information. Right. So having like a knowledge intelligence graph that could actually work with a new way to govern the data Absolutely. would be a nice way to make it available. I mean, I remember back in the storage days, we used words like highly available and high availability. They mean different things. So low latency is the key. Low latency and power are the key to the generative movement. Latency in this case is data latency. 100%. Talk about why that combination of horizontal scale and specialism yes. in the data yes. has to be in concert and distributed. Right. And the importance of it and how hard it is. Yeah, it's hard to do, you know, because you have to get data from different systems. But that's really where this core technology comes into play which is, you know, used to be process mining, now it's object-centric process mining, because it allows you to bring together objects and events from different systems and look at them as one, you know, graph and one flow and really understand where are my bottlenecks, yeah. where are things getting stuck, where do we have too much effort, yeah. and then again, you add the context to it, your business context, and you get a new data asset that you yeah. didn't have before. Yeah. Right, it was stuck in all these systems. The context wasn't even captured. This right? is where the X-ray comes in. That's you can where the see things, comes in. and it's an X-ray that's contextualized. Right, yeah. this is this bone. Yeah, this is good. This is not so good. <laughs> right, it hurts. And, You've got a broken leg. Exactly, you got a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, and you know, it's not just a one-off. It's always yeah. on. You talk about latency. We just introduced huge improvements in all of our integrations. Our yeah. latency, our scalability. I mean, we do this. You know, there's one customer um, that we talked about in the new keynote, DAXA. They're bringing data in just one process from 80 systems, okay? That's one logistics process. There's 80 different systems involved, yeah. right? They have a franchise. So you, you, you bring this together, you, you build a, a real, um, uh, you know, process intelligence graph, and you can enable AI and automation, all forms of automation, really, in a new way. I want to talk about partnership. I'll come back to some of the domain-specific value positions and how gener general AI called the basic foundation models, because you can't just throw that at the enterprise. We're going to come back to that. But uh, you have a lot of partners. You mentioned customers. Cut customers are now in the ecosystem. Oh, I mean, so the, the world yeah. went from cloud 1.0, ecosystems were super important, yeah. but they were just standalone SaaS vendors. Yeah. Now we have a notion of connected, I oh, call yeah. it connected ecosystem, because now customers and partners and cloud are all connecting together, and then you yeah. get the on-prem, which is basically cloud operations, so yeah. it's distributed cloud. I just call it all cloud, because it's all yeah. cloud. So the importance of data exchanging between APIs, now Gen AI layer, is going to be big. And the word intentional has been kicked around yeah. uh, in a lot of the, uh, the CUBE interviews we've done. Yeah. People say, we have an intentional partnership with this company. I noticed that, and I talked about this on my podcast recently, where to use the baseball metaphor, is that they're playing small ball. Right. They're getting smaller ecosystems, yeah. but they're better partners. IBM um, has uh, used to have tons of logos. Now it's a handful. You're on there. Yeah. Um, and so I'm seeing a trend where the partner not has to integrate t platform integration yeah. into their app. Yeah. If Watson X is going to do yeah. something, why wouldn't you partner? And they're right. clearly partnering. So Amazon's doing the same. Everyone's yeah. doing it. So talk about the role of partnerships because data trust is now an equation in AI. Yeah. Where'd it come from? What's behind that API? Right. Yeah. Is it end-to-end? -end? Uh -huh. Is it, what's the security right. posture? There's a lot of like 
yep. stuff going on. Uh, is that changing the partnership relationships that you guys are working on now? And how do you see that kind of the uh, everyone wants to have an ecosystem? Some do, some don't have it. But this is a, kind of a new, very nuanced. But I see this happening. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, and I think you pick up on this. You're very, you're very plugged in, 100. Uh, percent That's a great question. So we we think it takes a village or an ecosystem yeah. to make this work, right? And our goal is. To, when you have an ecosystem, the first question you've got to ask yourself is what value do you provide to the ecosystem, <laughs> right? So we provide this common language yeah. for, your, for the business processes in a company. And um, we, just with our agency, we introduced a number of integrations, right? IBM Watson Orchestra is one, Microsoft Copilot, AWS, uh, yeah. the, you know, uh, to build AI agents, and a lot of smaller ISVs. Um, so the, um, the ecosystem is a very, very big and important yeah. factor for us. We also have partners building apps now where they bundle their domain specific and industry specific expertise into IP that customers can use to get started right away, right? So the ecosystem yeah. is multiple layers. It's really, really important on the infrastructure and data side, yeah. right? We talked about um, about that on the um, on the automation side, yeah. right? All types of automation that we that we can enrich with our data and our yeah. context and, and we're really excited about yeah. um, the it's ecosystem. It's just not a marketing partnership. Oh, it's, no. it's really has to be technically connected. Yeah, for us, partnerships always start with engineering, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> like we want to bring yeah. real value to customers. Yeah. So, so they use those things and they say, hey, I want to build an agent in Copilot Studio, Agent Studio from Microsoft. Yeah. Where, get, where how, does, how is this agent going to learn how my business flows? Yeah. Well, we can provide a common language. Yeah. So, you know, you can just plug into it. It's seamless. It's fully integrated. And, and you can start automating a business. You know what I love about what you guys do? You touch a lot of things and you make sense of it. You got right. the, the intelligent knowledge graph, you got agency. Um, we just, uh, Cube Research posted a bunch of stories on The Economist or on digital twins. Yes. And I've, I've always loved digital twins, but it's also been a manufacturing thing yes. because that's a, a little, the first use case. Yes. And their whole goal was to do simulation yes. to make efficiency yes. work. Okay, but the premise of our new digital twin view is, and I want to get your commentary on this, is that it's about process. Yes. And so the simulation of manufacturing is fit per, fit for purpose for manufacturing, but you can do simulations on other processes. So the the it's not just digital twin is the thing for manufacturing. We do digital twins for our media. I'm sure if I'm a process owner, I'm like, hey, I'd love to simulate yeah. things before I roll them out. I, you're smiling. I can tell this is a sweet right. spot for you. So, yeah. so, so you asked about the founding story, yeah. right? Yeah. I, the th part I left out is that the initial idea was actually to build a simulation company. <laughs> we wanted to simulate processes. Yeah. And we found out, okay, we don't have the data and the input and, and the knowledge to do it. Yeah. So we focus on the process mining piece. <laughs> but it's starting to happen because what you're really talking about is a digital twin of an organization. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when you have a digital of an organization, the next step is you simulate it. You do scenario analysis. You you say, hey, if we add resources here, yeah. or we can automate here with AI agents, we're going to get some productivity. But think about how much we can speed this up for our customers. Yeah. Yeah. What do we need to take out? So we have um, emerging capabilities in that domain. And, and um, I think that, again, it's enabled. It's all enabled by yeah. that foundation. Um, that we talked about the process intelligence graph, the common language, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and and it's really exciting. There's a lot that's yeah. going to happen in that. I think in that I think space. I think I think it's headroom. I think we're not there yet. Yeah, but it's that's, that's where we go. I mean, 100%. it goes down to things like security, threat detection. What if I was hacked? Let's simulate. We can do blue team, red team. We have all that data. Right. Let's just create a digital twin right. and to run an agent. So there's things it, like that. It can even inform like how you set up your front office and commerce operations, for example, right? Like yeah. and how you configure your products because that's often um, yeah. restricted by the processes, right? Yeah. So we want to help people scale their processes to the level of yeah. their potential and ambition. It's like we're in a progression. I compared the Gen AI revolution to the web where um, everything was pegged by both technology innovation, which is how fast can you dial up and <coughs> broadband and the web pages loaded. And, but ultimately the, the key was online population of users was the key Correct. benchmark. Now we're seeing that same thing. Gen AI is early, but there's still not the adoption and the technology innovation is getting better. Now the only problem is costs are getting higher, but right. inference is going to get dropped down. So we're in the <coughs> early days. So yeah, digital twins, all this awesome agents, they're coming. But right now, a lot of blocking and tackling is on process. I call the meat and potato process where the value is. Well, I think that there's two things, right? One is if you optimize your processes, First of all, you're going to get a lot of value. It pays for itself, yeah. which is the cool thing. The wow. other thing that's nice is if you build that common language across 50 years of mess that was created, 
that the processes have to work its way through yeah. with different systems and different applications. If you build that foundational uh, common language and, and layer, intelligence layer, it's going to save you money, but you are prepared for everything that's yeah. coming. Yeah. Right? It's foundational. It's foundational. Yeah. Because the agents are going to need it, the digital twins are going to need it, and really your next generation applications, because you want to get to a um, place where it's composable where you can just compose processes and applications very, very quickly. Yeah. And, and that's what this ultimately enables. So, Al, you agree that we're foundational right now, get set in the table, setting the foundation for the future? 100%. Okay, so let's get into that, because one of the things we've been saying on theCUBE, Dave and I and George and the whole team talk about it all the time on theCUBE, is you, know, you can't just throw AI at the enterprise. No. Because, like you said, it can write a song for you, <laughs> give you a, a poem, <laughs> write your homework for you, write some blog posts, but it can't figure out who's got identity access to the right. systems. Right. So, I we have a premise that the the new IT value, I quote IT, because IT used to be, you know, provision for the to serve the, the business. IT serves the business. Um, and they would provision networking, put a PC on your desk, then a laptop, virtual desktop. Now the new value to the business, because every technology is the business. So right. that's one thing that's happened. Right. So the question is what serves the business? Yes. Domain expertise. Yeah seems to be the critical linchpin yeah. between how AI works or not. So the first wave of work is process mining identification yeah. of yeah. those processes yes. and what are the knobs and buttons that yes. are pushed daily. Yes. Yes. Document the hell out of those yes. Yes. and then get it up and running. Yes. Um, for instance, Red Hat's doing extremely well with Ansible because they have so much experience with configuration management right. that they've got their agents already right. Baked. And anything yes. new comes in, they just learn. Yes. So they're already kind of ahead yes. of the game there. I see this coming right into the business professional. So I want to ask you, uh, because there is productivity gains and costs as well, but um, about a decade ago, there was a concept called the 10X engineer. Yes. And that's the cloud enabled yes. that technical labor yes. to get a 10X efficiency. Yes. I think we're going to see a 100X business professional 100%. Um, uptake. Take us through how that plays out and what I got to do as a business to say, okay, my people are my asset. Yes. They know all the buttons. Yes. They've been with us forever. He built yes. the process. Yes. That doesn't work with the other girl's yes. process over there. And she does that, he does that. So like this, owners. Yes. That's an important part. What? Yes. Share your thoughts on this. So, um, you know, what, if, um, what our customers are doing and one of the customers you saw in the keynote was Exxon, Exxon Mobil. and. There's lots of those examples where um, they've established process owners for the first time, right? So someone that's accountable and then forwarded to cash, for example, right? Across systems, across silos, across applications. And those process owners, if we give them access to the right data, the right knowledge, an integrated common language that they mm -hmm. can access across those systems and uh, and end, they can drive incredible impact with their teams and organizations and the work shifts from really yeah. a lot of repetitive tasks yeah. to governing, scaling, overseeing, strategizing, right? So our human potential, right, yeah. is like unleashed, right? Yeah. And, and, and you think about today, um, you know, bad processes really hold people back, yeah. right? Yeah. They can do more, they can achieve more. So uh, sure, it's going to change some jobs, Right, and sure, it's going to also create some disruption, yeah. and we need to manage that. But I think the upside case is yeah. that, to your point, right, people will yeah. be able to do much, much more. They're enabling that that hundred x or ten x yeah. individual. Let's get into the data side, because the process side, again, you guys are doing extremely well. Yeah. Um, when I talk to practitioners out there in these large companies that are going through the process, yeah. there's two camps. The process struggle bus that are on, oh my God, I got this process, and this, they don't talk to each other, which you talked about. Um, and then you got the data teams that said large sets of data, so you got the data scientists, right. and maybe platform engineering, right. some data engineering. And then you have a company that has pretty much, not a lot of process problems, but they have a ton of data. Yes. And so we're seeing people who have data, whether they're in a legacy company or a startup, tend to do really well with Gen AI because they yes. get they understand they have data. So they're using AI for a couple of reasons. One, using AI to say, what is my data? Yes. Okay. And then two, how do I unlock that yes. data? And then after they get that done, they say, what new data can I get? Mm -hmm. So kind of three kind of progressions. Right. Throw AI at the data, it's saying yeah. a ton of data, what is valuable? Yeah. How do I do some yeah. instant successes? How mm -hmm. do I get that little win, big mm -hmm. win, to mm -hmm. knock it down, get validation, mm -hmm. it's working, and then how do I unlock this potential? Yeah. And then, wow, if I add more data to it, that's good too. So yeah. take me through your thoughts on that because the, yeah. the first one's easy. 
Postage easy. Yep. Okay. Second one is okay. Process so, helps there. Yep. While wow, it's scaling, we're getting yep. some multiple productivity gains. Yep. Demonstrable. And then here's my cost ratio done. That scales uh, on, on a spreadsheet. And then it's like, wow, I want to enrich my data yeah. because I can affect my reasoning. Right. So, so um, we see both of those things happening, right? We, so, so, so the first thing, you're the foundation layer in understanding the data and transforming it faster, I completely agree. The second thing, how do we get value out of the data? That's something where process mining really allows you to use the data to tell you about your processes and then allows you to monitor them on an ongoing basis to take action to feed mm -hmm. agents. So that's really, I mean, all we do every day, right? Yeah. So we take the data that companies already have, yeah. and now we're driving more value from it. But the third piece is emerging. So there's a few things happening. One, companies instrument their systems better. So we work with a large bank not far from here, and they, met, they saw, well, we got some great insights from, from process intelligence, but there are systems that don't capture all the events. Let's put some middleware in, right? Let's, let's actually capture more and more events as people execute their processes. People are putting agents on yeah. people's desktops, right? We have a task mining product where you can instrument the desktop and understand what processes are running on the desktop and add that into your system-based process mining. So there's data enrichment. There's also um, a product that's in beta at the moment that we talked about in the keynote as well called uh, Networks where multiple companies are bringing together yeah. their process streams and process data yeah. to understand how our process is working when they leave the forwards of my company going to your company yeah. and there's huge efficiencies yeah. there. So I think that the, once you get really good at driving value from your data, you want more of it, right? Yeah. So and, then, go, and then you uh, measure yeah. the health. How exactly. are we doing? I'm exactly. feeling good today. I've been working out. You well, know? And that's another part. You want to monitor it, yeah. right? You're yeah. going to have agents, new applications, yeah. all, that, all that executing your processes. Yeah. You want to have monitor. Wow. Well, so you guys yeah. got a great company, we could probably go for another hour. I do want to ask a couple more questions because um, a topic that's been uh, in a, around for a long time, but now with ransomware has been kicked around a lot, cyber resilience yes. essentially is data backup and recovery that was renamed cyber yes. resilience, <laughs> rubric went public, brilliant branding. Um, but the word resilience means recovery yes. um, and being ready to handle things. In Gen AI, there's a whole nother resilience challenge. Yeah. Okay, so with Gen AI, it's also very good, but also things can happen really fast. Yes. I can train maybe bad yes. data, password yes. sets. We saw uh, someone's passwords get in trained, and how do you untrain it? So right. you're starting to see mindset of how do we be more resilient? Yeah. How do you see that playing into companies as they think about the governance piece? I want to have explainability. Yeah. I want to have the ability to recover. You know what? We did something. We want to roll that back. What's your thoughts there? What's kind of the state of the art thinking there? Yes, um, so I think there's multiple things. One is the way you orchestrate how LLMs interact with your data needs proper governance layer, right? So you need to understand exactly which information was exposed, make sure only the information that's really necessary is exposed, and then also understand um, you know, what went into you know, when, when, the, when, for example, an agent uses Solona sort of as a calculator, calculate the throughput time, we want to be sure that we can explain exactly how we got to that answer that fed the LLM. So that's basic stuff. The other thing that's really important is once you bring agents into a process, you need to have that monitoring and observability because you want to understand yeah. what the agents did. What we see a lot of our customers doing is they still have a human in the loop. Right, where, where the human yeah. approves or, or, or disapproves. So we talked about Constantino, you know, they, they've been able to get a 5x um, productivity gain in their auto management mm -hmm. clerks. Um, the agent gets all the data, gets all the information from different process streams, makes a recommendation, but the human still approves yeah. it for now. That might change, but yeah. only as companies get more yeah. and more confidence. And then when we, um, uh, for example, um, think about, about really how that's going to evolve, I think I think you're going to have more and more of that. So that's not a topic yeah. that's going to go away. That's going to be more and more. And you need very, very good governance and monitoring. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> a challenge still is you don't know how the LLMs reason. So that's not something we get involved <laughs> in. That's, you know, there's other companies that do that. If my brain was a vector uh, database, I'd be <laughs> matching this conversation to some of the early DevOps conversations. Right. You know, guardrails, observability, yes. management, yes. how do I turn it's on very services, similar. Yeah. very similar DevOps yeah, kind of yeah. growth there. Um, I want to get to the customers, but one final question you brought up governance, I, didn't, I missed this before. Um, open table formats, great, we're seeing that up standard. The catalog governance market, what's your view on the big change that Gen AI is uh, forcing and it's disrupting and an enablement, disruptive enabling the catalog side? Of it? Because I think, you know, to do horizontal scalability, you've got to have a intelligent governance. Yes. What's 
the old way and new way in governance? How does a customer who's made an investment in master data management maybe a decade ago, what when, are they staring down the tracks now on? What are they thinking? What's the ideal? Well, the old way is um, becoming very rigid, right? And that way getting good data, right? It's like, you know, you want a new data product, see you in two years, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or see you in six months, right? You need to go through all yeah. this process. The old way is, hey, you want to change the master data, create a new supplier, you know, see you in six weeks, eight weeks, right? And then, and then the old way is, let's spend millions and millions of dollars on master data cleanup projects, where we go through all the data, we call people, we try to confirm the information. That's the old way. It's very expensive and never really worked. You can go to 10 companies. Are you happy with your master data? You're going to get 10 no's, okay? <laughs> You're not going to get a single yes, trust me. You know? So the new way and what we are doing, and we actually launched some apps around this um, yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, at Salesphere, is how do we bring process execution and master data together in a single view so that we understand yeah not just where you have duplicate supplier records or something like that, but what impact does it have, yeah, yeah. right? Hey, we got 5,000 invoices yeah. from this supplier and we had to rework 3,000 of them. We yeah. need to look at the master data records associated with their yeah. product catalog, their supply catalog, et cetera. So what we can do now is we can actually prioritize you. So because master data governance will never go away, you're always going to have to do it, but we can actually do it intelligently. But it has to change. It has to change. It has to be informed by data. It has to be prioritized. It has to be... Um, fed with recommendations. Hey, we had 5,000 rework items. If you had changed the price list, because you always change the same prices to this, you can just accept that with one click or that rework goes away. So we yeah. can have intelligent master data management based on what actually happened in the transactions, what actually yeah. happened in the process, and we can enable that using obviously um, LLMs as well in terms of making those recommendations and identifying those patterns. So we are very excited about that because, yeah. you know, we talk about supply chain planning. Yeah. Supply chain planning is maybe yeah. about the optimization engine, but it's a lot about the inputs, yeah. the planning parameters. Yeah. Yeah. So we can actually look at what actually happened in the process and yeah. then recommend the I mean, best it's a, it's a flywheel where you're changing the input criteria based on what's happened. So and not what, just what, input. what went wrong, exactly. Got it. Yeah. It's a loop, It's right? a super exciting yeah. environment. Okay, let's get some, before we get the customers, what's the basic thing you sell for the folks watching? What, what do you guys sell? An app? Is it a, a software? Is it a service? Take us through the basic. How are your customers engaging with you? What are yes. you selling? So we sell two things, really. We sell apps by us and our partners. So if you're in accounts payable, we have all these apps. If you're in supply chain, we have all these apps. If you're a bank doing cross-border payments, well, we have a partner that has built an app to optimize that. So that's package solutions you can buy, you can implement very quickly, and you can optimize. And then we're selling the platform. And the platform allows you to bring in any process data, go horizontal across your enterprise, and go really, really big, like our customer BMW, for example, that is yeah. virtually analyzing almost every process across the business, 80% of their cars, uh, uh, um, you know, the processes, manufacturing, finance, procurement. So the, um, the, the a lot of people start with a use case that's packaged and yeah. then use the platform to go across. And your company. partner strategy is to pla partner on the platform level yes. and give the customer choice on the apps. If they want to use Watson, they can use that. If they want to use you, they can use you. Or like, exactly. is that how it works? And, and, and on the apps, actually, so the apps are basically IP that partners package on top of the platform. But if you use the platform, you get all the integrations, right? You can use it to enable Watson X, yeah. enable Microsoft Copilot Studio, enable AWS. So those, those, um, Partnerships are really, really important yeah. because that's how people operationalize the change and the solutions. Uh, you know, and by the way, our partners can build apps using those tools as well. You know, it's interesting yeah. when you talk about business, the business market, the B two B market, yeah. um, in this now connected environment, partners and integrations are critical. So partnerships, you've got great. You have to yeah. have a good partnership yeah. to get value out of that. But the integrations is what matters. Yeah. At the end of the day, how yeah. how you feel about the integrations? What's the key there? What makes you guys different and what's unique? Well, first of all. You know, we are committed to do cross-platform process intelligence, right? We are not associated with any of the big systems of record in itself. We, you know, you, if you're an Oracle ERP customer, well, we have great integrations. If you're an SAP customer, we have great integrations. If you're using, you know, whatever system of record you use, um, we have a lot of those integrations yeah. built, and we are building more every single day, right? So, so yeah. on the da that's on the data side. If you have your data in a data lake, like a Snowflake, or if yeah. you use Databricks, well, we have great integrations there as well, and we are continuing to advance that and build more and more of those integrations in partnership, Azure Data Fabric. It doesn't really matter, right, where, where you have those, um, those solutions. 
And then on the on the consumption side, if you have again, if your yeah. strategy is around Microsoft and co-pilots and agents for Microsoft, well, we are, we want to provide all the integrations there, and that's what we announced with agency, yeah. similar to IBM and others. So the the we have a super open platform strategy. We yeah. know what we are good at. We we, we focus on what we're good at because that's a huge opportunity for us, and 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 we integrate and embrace right. partners up and down the stack. What's interesting is, is that the mod, the modern era of Gen AI right now that we're seeing is that you can have a platform and apps combination. Oh yeah. Without making it completely siloed, you can customers can have choice, plug and play, have build use the building blocks. Yeah. Because the, in data. You you have to capture the value. Yes. And it, and the platform gives you the data value of the yes. of the of the data. Yeah, 100%. And then the apps is where it's rendered. Well, it's where it's rendered, and it's like all these prepackaged use cases that you know you can yeah. implement very fast. All right, just about customers. Yeah. Tell us about your customers. BMW. You got a bunch of customers on stage. Uh, we interviewed a bunch of them. Talk about the the size and scope of the customers. Is there a certain mix you're seeing? Is it Across the board, I know you got some big names. Yes, and they got a lot of data. Is it data? Data companies that got a lot of data. They're full of data. They're they're busting out in the steams. Or you got startups. Take us through the, the customer well, roadmap. The, the the great thing um, and, and something that you know we're really excited about at Salesforce is to see all these customers, right? From small to big, many of the largest corporations in the world. You know. Um, one of my favorite stories is, um, you know, Inca Group. It's an it's an IKEA uh, retailer, one of the main IKEA retailers, and they, you know, when you order a kitchen from IKEA, or from anybody, you know, IKEA is very good at it. But that's a complicated process, right? <laughs> and so it's a very high consequence because if 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 whoever sells your kitchen screws up, it doesn't fit, it arrives late, not all the components arrive at the same time, you're going to remember that for a while yeah. because it's great to have a new kitchen and to move in, but it is not a great it's usually a very fun process to, to, to get there. So they have this thing where they're using Salonis to create the perfect order, right? And they're thinking about a kitchen order end end through the yeah. systems, through the different sub-processes, and define a perfect order, and they're driving that yeah. up with Salonis. And I love that because it touches inventory, yeah. it touches customer experience, it touches uh, you know real people out there that are building yeah. a new kitchen, moving into new homes. So that's just one example. But you know, it's not just the big corporates yeah. that have huge scale um, yeah. Like you know, an Exxon Mobil, like an Inca. It's also really more and more public sector, right? State of Oklahoma, they had an issue where they had three yeah. billion of purchasing volume going outside of their central agency for, for for procurement and services, and they've been able within month, you know, they got an, they had an audit, it's all public, and 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 that was flagged, and they, within month, they got full visibility across systems in their procurement and then purchase to pay yeah. to understand what exactly can they do to make sure that the taxpayer money is spent in the ideal way possible. Or Northwestern Hospital, right? That's a great case. So like many customers we just talked about, they started in finance and procurement, optimizing those processes, but now they're taking Salonis into the imaging space. Yeah. Right for all the patients that need a mammogram, how is that process? How can we reduce wait times? And the next step is they want to take it across all the patient flows, so that when you go into one of their hospitals, you have an ideal journey, you have minimum wait times, and um, and, and, and you know that that excites us because yeah. yes, it's economic value, but it's also really experience value and 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 it helps people. So uh, there's a big range, um, you know, and, and lots of customers. Across industries, you know, it's interesting. You, as you talk, I'm, I'm just my mind starts thinking about like some of the things I've seen over the past 15 years, just doing cube interviews. The consumer market has always had the big money to do right. big data projects. Right. The enterprises, there's some big whales out there that yeah. have done some big data projects, mostly monolithic, big, mm -hmm. big systems, Kubernetes clusters that didn't work, and they moved to Spark and the data lakes. But they, no one really had a good holistic view of the business data that they had, data about our business in one holistic place. It might have been stored in a data lake, but it wasn't understandable. Exactly. And I think the consumer businesses have done that. I've, for example, in, in the banking world, you know, consumer banking is state of the art. They don't care about cost. They just want to get the customer right. relationship nailed so down. Yeah. You got to talk about commercial banks. They're right. lagging, and they're and usually smaller. Yeah. And so now, for the first time, you know, you can do things like saying, "Hey, you know, I'm going to." Send a kitchen. Well, if you're sending it to Asheville, North Carolina, then you know the roads are closed. Like, exactly. You need that data. Where's that data going to come from? Exactly. And this is where you start to get into like, okay, I can do more if I peek my head out of my data set. And so you're seeing the entire business B two B market just un un explode in, in growth. Oh, 100%. I mean, this 
this is an untapped market. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, you, you, there's so many challenges there, right? Like you think about supply chains, right? For example, and just the internal processes. So, you know, one of our um, um, great customers is Smurf at Westrock, and they've been able to drive huge optimizations in the, how they manage inventory, right? Because there's yeah. multiple processes and multiple data sets that you have to bring together in one holistic yeah. view, plus you need the business context. What does on time mean for us? Yeah. What's still okay, what's not yeah. okay? It's different for every business, yeah. right? Uh, it's different if your products, you know, um, it, 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 depending on the product you sell. And they've, they've seen huge amounts of improvement yeah. there, and now they're plugging AI into it so that material planners and, um, yeah. and even people in the factories can just chat with the chatbot interface yeah. to get information about their supply chain. Like, hey, c can we get this material from another yeah. factory? Well, instead of purchasing it, we see the purchase order. We can stop that purchase order because you can get it from yeah. another factory that's yeah. nearby. Right? So the amount of opportunity in the supply chain just within the four yeah. walls of the company yeah. is huge. But then with our network, as you extend it across yeah. multiple uh, players, and then there's also, again, it's about partnership. So we have a partnership with P44 which provides visibility yeah. beyond the yeah. four walls of your company yeah. and, and many other supply so chains. So you become visible. smarter with more partnerships because you're basically connecting. Again, in that, connective tissue, in that you con know? connective ecosystem yeah. formula yeah. that's emerging. This is now, I've never seen this before like this. Yeah, and, and we talk about connecting your enterprise with process intelligence. Yeah, it's music. Alice, you got to be excited. I got to ask the final question. First of all, I love that you're in New York. Now that we have our set here yes. in New York. You've got a great ecosystem developing. Yes. Of course, the Cube is a, a global network, but as we start doing more physical events, we definitely want to have you here and and and, and do more content because this is going to be an ongoing set of conversations because it's just the tip of the iceberg. How are you guys feeling? I mean, as the co-founder, um, you've been through the journey. I mean, I won't say war because it's been, but it's been up and down <laughs> since Hadoop. There's been, you know, it's never been, it never went away, but I, the hockey stick doesn't kick up until what, 2018? Yes, COVID was around yeah. that time frame? A little bit before, yeah. But. So, you know, you're, you're puttering along and then boom, you go up. How's the team? How many employees do you have? What's the update? Give us some stats, numbers, revenue, if we can share it, or what's it like at the event? What was the hallway conversations like? What was the, give us a vibe. Right. Well, we have almost 3,000 employees now, and I tell you, it took us almost, yeah, six years to get to 80. Okay, <laughs> so the first six years was 80, yeah. and then in another six years, you're, you're much, much bigger. But yeah. what we've always been driven by is the ROI that we can provide to our customers. Yeah. That's how we incentivize our people, that's how we measure ourselves, you know, and that's how our customers measure us, and that's really exciting. And that's, yeah. you know, it doesn't really matter what the market is doing, we are focused heads down on what we can do for our customers because they always want to make their processes work better to yeah. save money to improve the experience for their employees, for their customers. So your cultural theme is productivity gains, ROI for the customer. Value, it's all about value. Value, value yeah. extraction. Well, congratulations again, great event. Thanks for coming here in our new QB st studios. Of course, when you're in Palo Alto, we got a set there too. Pleasure to, <laughs> to, to be here. I love you, yeah. what you guys are yeah, doing love, and I look yeah. forward to being back. Great stuff. Okay, I'm John Furrier, your host of the theCUBE. We are here in New York City at the NYSC CUBE Studios partnership with Brian Bauman and Wired, NYC Wired. It's a new community, it's an open, e open ecosystem that we're, we're rolling out and it's kind of an experiment, but it's kind of a digital twin of our events, bringing the community together and forming high value networks of great people, experts, inventors, entrepreneurs, investors, just cool people who are, want to contribute to the community. If you're interested, hit me up on DM. I'd love to talk more. Thanks for watching.